Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today I'm here to talk to you about the brand new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980 Ti graphics card. I have one sitting here right in front of me. If you're familiar with NVIDIA high-end GPUs at all, you're gonna, this is going to look very familiar. They have had very similar industrial design and just look and style of their reference cards for quite some time, basically since the release of the GTX 690. Uh, the very, very similar design here to what we saw with the 780 Ti, the 780, um, the 980, of course, as well. But this is a brand new graphics card, except it's going to seem very familiar to you once I start talking about the specifications. This is a high-end $650, get that out of the way early, $650 graphics card. It uses the GM200 GPU, so it's based on NVIDIA's Maxwell architecture, but there are a couple of specification differences. It's almost identical to the GTX Titan X, which was released just back in March for $1,000 and now sells for like eleven or $1,200 online. Um, this one has, instead of 3,072 CUDA cores, this card has 2,816 CUDA cores. So you're missing 256 shaders, uh, disabled two SM units, however you want to look at it. It also drops to 172 texture units. Everything else is the same in terms of GPU specifications. You've got the same number of ROPs. you still got a 384-bit memory bus. Um, what does change here, though, is the amount of memory. Instead of having 12 gigs of memory, which at the time seemed like an insane amount of system memory or graphics memory for a GPU, and it is, this has six gigs. Much more reasonable, helps them bring the cost down, uh, and it also, it just, it's, you're not going to need more than six gigs for quite some time for a single GPU, so... Uh, don't, don't pine over the 12 gigabyte variants. Um, clock speeds wise, this is also rated at the same base clock of 1000 and about the same boost clock, I think at 1065 or something like that as well. So, you know, looking at the specs table, you'd say, well, this is just going to be a smidge slower than what you get with the Titan X because you're losing, you know, 256 CUDA cores dropping from 3072 to 2816. Um, but we'll talk about that in the performance section in just a little bit. The design of, its, uh, of the card itself, like I said, remains unchanged. You still have a, a blower style design. You still got the acrylic window in so you can see the heat sink on there, which is, I still think, pretty nice. Uh, silver on black color scheme. You have your two SLI connectors, which allow you to connect two, three, or four graphics cards in SLI. <clears throat> excuse me, an SLI if you want to. For power connectivity, the same as the Titan X. You have one 8-pin and one 6-pin power connection. And then for display connectivity, also identical to the Titan X and uh, the 980 as well, you have three full-size DisplayPort connections, one full-size HDMI that does support HDMI 2.0, and then one dual-link DVI connection as well. I do expect and have already seen several uh, retail cards from EVGA and ASUS and others that will go away from this reference design pretty quickly because everything is very similar to the Titan X and in a lot of ways similar to the 980. Um, they're ready with those coolers uh, and I expect to see probably just the first wave as reference cards and the rest of that will be some of the custom designs that you're used to seeing from those different board vendors. Now let's get into the discussion of performance. Even though it has fewer shaders, as it turns out, this card performs basically identically to the GeForce GTX Titan X. In all of the games we tested at 2560 by 1440 and 4K, this card does not appreciably change in performance. In a couple of places, it's one or a half percent higher. In some places, it's one or two percent slower than the GTX Titan X. And it can do that magically because the clock speeds actually boost to a little bit higher. In my experience, we're actually looking at 40 to 50 megahertz higher on the 980 Ti compared to the Titan X. That's just not rated boost clocks, but what the actual real world boost clocks are when you monitor them using something like GPU-Z. Now let's compare to the other cards on the marketplace in this field. The GTX 980, which was previously the kind of not insanely priced graphics card flagship for NVIDIA. Uh, first of all, it gets a price drop to $499 instead of $549, but the 980 Ti is about 30% faster than it in a wide range of tests. You can look at anywhere from Battlefield 4 to Metro Last Light to um, the Grand Theft Auto 5 benchmarks we have on PCPer.com that show that to be the case. It's about 30% faster than uh, the GTX 980. Compared to AMD's highest-end 
single GPU graphics card, the Radeon R9 290X, you're looking at anywhere from 40 to 50% faster. Um, so you're going to get a significant performance boost here with the 980 Ti over the 290X. Now, of course, there is the Radeon R9 295X2, which is a dual GPU card. And that's a more interesting discussion because in most cases, the average frame rate you get with the 295X2 is higher than what you're going to get with the 980 Ti or the Titan X, you know, that we had the same discussion with that release back in March. Um, sometimes that's up to as much as 40% higher, which is a dramatic, dramatic amount, considering that Radeon R9 295X2 sells for about $630 to $650 today, a little bit less than this card. Now the downside is, is you have to deal with all the complications of multi-GPU, whether that be SLI or Crossfire, there's always complications that go with that. Uh, for example, there are a couple of titles where the frame variance between uh, frames with the 295X2 is exceedingly high and it drastically changes and degrades the gaming performance or gaming experience rather that you get. So even though that average frame rate might be high, the, if the frame variance is high as long with it, sometimes that means that your overall experience will be lessened. And this is why we introduced frame rating to begin with. So a lot of that still applies here. There are some cases where um, I think in like GTA 5, for example, at 4K, the 295X2 just does not scale well with SLI or Crossfire. So this is, I think, maybe 1% or 2% slower, maybe. Might be actually be a couple higher um, for the 980 Ti over the 295X2. So there's some interesting discussions to be had there. But I think fundamentally the, the 295X2 and the 980 Ti just treat things quite a bit differently. Remember when the, when the 295X2 launched, it was $1,500, and now you can get it for like $650. Uh, there's a reason for that. It's still not an ideal solution. Dual GPU cards never tend to be an SLI, right? If you can get the performance in one GPU, you should definitely do it. Um, so now in terms of power consumption, again, identical to the Titan X. It's rated at a 250-watt TDP. Uh, compare that to the Radeon R9 290X that has a 290-watt rated TDP. So it's rated at 40 watts more. We tested it a little bit more than that variance between the two, difference between the two. Um, and the R9 295X2, even when it does offer performance better than the 980 Ti, it's actually using as much as 275 watts more than the 980 Ti. So even though this has a rated TDP of 250, sometimes the 295X2 uses more than twice the power to accomplish what it does uh, in terms of performance. So that's, you know, most people don't buy their GPU based solely on what the power consumption ratings are going to be, but it's an interesting metric to look at just in terms of uh, GPU and architectural efficiency. Overclocking capability, very similar to the Titan X, as you would expect. I actually got it to a little bit higher with a GPU offset of 250 megahertz, which resulted in real world, you know, uh, recorded clock speeds, pretty stable at about 1,465 megahertz, um, which if you compare that to the measured frequencies uh, at stock, which turned out to be, I think, 1,189 megahertz, you're looking at a 20 to 23% increase in clock speeds from stock to when you overclock it. Now, you obviously have to deal with additional fan noise with that, although maybe retail cards from Asus and EVGA will kind of change that up so that the fans are more efficient, coolers are more efficient, so you can get that overclocking capability without uh, a whole lot of the extra noise. You will get more power draw and heat out of it, but if the noise is minimized, I think most people will deal with that. So overclocking capability, there's still a lot to be had here in the GM200 GPU, so that's good news. Back to the price as we kind of round up things here. This is $650, which is interesting. It's not cheap by any means, but you compare it to the Titan X, which is, has an MSRP of $999. This is a $350 less expensive video card that performs essentially identically, right? The only people that need 12 gigs of memory are CUDA developers that have really large data sets. Uh, and, and keep in mind that Titan X does not do double precision compute right at an accelerated way so this has the same kind of performance in single precision and double precision just has less memory in it uh, but for gamers the six gigs of memory is plenty uh, grand theft auto 5 at 4k at our fairly high very high image quality settings we use for benchmarking claims to use about five gigs of memory you know it's just an estimate in the in the uh, settings menu but it's gives you an idea of where you're at there uh, so six gig six gigs of memory is fine $350 less money than the Titan X. I think, in my mind, you'd have to be crazy at this point to buy the Titan X with the purpose of gaming, knowing that this card exists. We also mentioned the GTX 980 drops to $499 from $549, so you get a $50 price break there. 
So you're looking at $150 upcharge from the 980 to the 980 Ti. Actually pretty reasonable considering the performance you're getting at 30 to 35% compared to the 980. Uh, AMD is a little bit more complicated, right? They have the R9 290X, which sells for as low as 329, so half the price of this card. And it offers performance, you know, about, you know, 50% lower, 40 to 50% lower than uh, what you get with this card. So it kind of matches up with what you would expect there. Um, there are still a lot of people out there that are going to love R9 290X. It uses more power, generates more heat, it tends to be louder than these cards. But if that doesn't matter to you, and if you're looking for performance per dollar, the R9 290X might still be uh, the best option. But also look at the GTX 970, because that is the price competitive product um, from NVIDIA at that point. And then again, we talked about the 295X2 has dropped from its initial $1,500 price point all the way down to like 620s, 640s. And that is very compelling. Again, in the games where SLI or Crossfire scales correctly, you don't have frame variance issues, you are going to see better performance out of that card than you are out of this. But you don't have the complications, you don't have the headache, and in many ways you get the benefits of uh, driver development, right? NVIDIA is miles ahead of AMD in terms of driver development still. I do believe that, honestly. Game, uh, game releases, day one drivers, when uh, The Witcher was released and Project Cars released, uh, NVIDIA had drivers that were ready to go to give you the best performance out of that. AMD is usually a couple of weeks behind. They just recently released a driver for The Witcher 3 and Project Cars. Um, that's th something to keep in mind when you look at what you're going to compare, especially if you're looking at a dual GPU card versus a single GPU card. So... Surprisingly, when I told the staff at PC Perspective that this was a $649 card, they were actually surprised. They were pleasantly surprised that it was going to be that low. They thought with the specifications and performance um, information that I had given them about how close it was to the Titan X, that it would be $799 or something like that, right? That it would be much closer to that $1,000 price mark of the Titan X. So $650 is not cheap for a video card, but I think it's less than what a lot of people expected to find based on the performance. A couple of other minor things here, GeForce updates that uh, Nvidia gave us along with the 7 or the 980 Ti. Uh, G-Sync supports windowed mode now, so that's an advantage. G-Sync will also allow you to disable V-Sync above the maximum refresh rate of the display. That is something that FreeSync has done since it first launched, but it was something that NVIDIA kind of fought back with us on. We kind of asked for many, many times, and they're finally delivering that with the, uh, the driver that releases with this card. And also they're going to officially announce mobile G-Sync, but we'll have another video and uh, story and discussion on that in the not too distant future. Also, last point, I have two other video cards in the desk here. A uh, GeForce GTX 680, which was the flagship card from 2003, I believe, 2000, no, I'm sorry, 2013, I think. No, 2012, maybe this one was from 2013. This is the 780 Ti. I'm getting my years mixed up here. Uh, but I thought it'd be interesting to just look at the performance characteristics of the previous flagship cards compared to this. Uh, the 780 Ti, close to the performance of a GTX 980, so you're looking at 35% performance jump. If you own a 780 Ti today and move up to a 980 Ti, that's okay. That's, that's reasonable. If you're that type of person that owned the 780 Ti, you might be interested in the 980 Ti anyway. However, if you own a GTX 680, which I know there are a lot of you out there, we got, uh, I tested real quickly, I tested Grand Theft Auto, uh, Battlefield 4, and Metro Last Light between this and this at 25 by 14, and you get roughly 2x the performance. So if you have a GTX 680 in your system now, and you upgrade to a 980 Ti, you get roughly 2x the performance um, for those games at you know, 25, 60 by 1440 resolution. So depending on what your gaming workload is, if it might be time to get that upgrade on. Make sure you go to PCPro.com, guys. We have the full review there, all of the benchmarks, pictures, um, breakdowns, uh, discussions of power consumption. Uh, if you want to see all the individuals, positive and negatives between which games do better at which, uh, with which with graphics cards and that type of stuff, that is all there. Highly encourage you to uh, take that in rather than just all these videos tend to be summaries, right? You know, there's a lot more detail and information that you need before you make these purchasing decisions. So check that out, pcper.com, or I'll have the link in the description of this video below. Thanks, guys. See you next time.